When I sent my son into this earth, my grace is him. My grace has provided everything that you need. For it is time, my children, to take the word very serious. For there be many things, many dramas that will go on in this earth, many casualties, many other things. That's always been. But it will be magnified. But those of you who walk in my grace, it shall have no effect on you. For I am the Lord thy God that overcome every situation in your life. For in you have the ability to overcome every situation. Because I'm in you. And I'll do great, 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 mighty works to you, said the Lord. So yield yourself. Be sensitive to me. Be sensitive to my voice, what I tell you to do. And I'll cause great, 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 and mighty things to happen in your life, said the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Turn in your Bibles. I forgot. <laughs> Turn in your Bibles to uh, Ephesians, the um, second chapter again. And we've been talking about overcoming unbelief. Now, in this series here, I'm setting a total foundation because I'm going to be dealing with eventually, how to get your manifestation. Now, if you do not, understand this, if you do not get this thing on unbelief, what you put in your ear gates, Jesus said, whatever you put in your ear gates and eye gates will affect you. So if you put more of the world in you than word in your spare time, guess what's going to be the dominating force? See, the world is full of unbelief. <laughs> you all heard what I said? The world is full of unbelief. So what you have to ha do, basically, is make a decision that you're going to spend time in the Word, like I shared with you last week. You've got to present your body a living sacrifice. You're not going to feel like doing no Word, just like a person don't feel like exercising. But if, once they get into it, guess what? You want more of it. Why? Because you start to see the benefits. And I need to say this to you. There is what you call a seed time and harvest time. There, everybody said there is a seed time and harvest time. See, we, we're in a society, we want everything instant. We get instant fast food, instant donuts, instant cocoa, instant this, and so all of a sudden, it doesn't work right away. It's what we do, we give it all, it doesn't really work. Let me ask you a question. Think about this a minute. If a guy trying to lose weight, okay, and he goes out and eat, oh, I'm on my diet now, he goes out and eat a watermelon. Okay, he said, I did it now. Did he lose any weight yet? He, did, he started something to go toward his destination. How long, how long you realize he got to stay with that for quite a while, right? In order for things to change. The same thing with the word. A farmer knows when he goes out and puts some seed in the ground, it's going to take time for it to harvest. There is a seed time and harvest for everything. So our responsibility is to put the word in. That's when we produce CDs so you can go back and water the word. Hello? Because the word is referred to as seed, and the word is referred to as water. And you put both together, you'll get the increase. What Christians do, they get the seed, and then what happens is the word, Satan wind up choking the word. Now watch this. Mark the fourth chapter, he said he chokes the word, and what happens? The word now becomes what? Unfruitful. That's how he short circuits your faith. What I told you, Ephesians 2 5, and we're going to do 2 8 for review. I have about now, and calm down, Robert. I got about 10 messages in me. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. Praise God. Watch this. Even when we were dead in sins, have he quickened? Have he what? Made us alive. That's what quicken is. Have, 
made us alive together with Christ. Everybody say, I'm alive together in Christ. Amen. But by grace are you saved. Now, what has happened basically with the church, they have taken and said, everything is about grace. No, it's not about grace. They both work together. Faith and grace work together. Like the water with the wet, they go together. If you go just all faith and no grace, then you find up trying to get God to do some things. Amen? Verse 8. Watch this. Or trying to get God to do something he's already done. Amen? Verse 8. For by grace are you saved through what? How did it come? Through faith. And not of yourself. It is a gift of God. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if everything ain't going to happen in our life, if you got saved through faith, your prosperity come through faith. So you already prosper. You are all ready to prosper. All your bills are paid. Because it's in you. Now, if I identify with the problem, I taught the problem. If I complain on my job about this is not happening, I'm not getting promoted. Okay, now guess what? You're murmuring and complaining. You're corresponding to the problem instead of corresponding by faith what, what you desire. I have the promotion. It belongs to me. It's already mine. I have the root of it. And so what you got, a root has to be cultivated. You got to start saying what you have, saying, saying what you have in you, <laughs> opposed to what the facts are. See, what you got in you will change the facts. Everybody said, what I have in me will change the facts. Amen. Now, I, I, I've been waiting to get into this. Hebrews, the third chapter. Hebrews 3. That was a side journey. Get back to this unbelief. Hebrews 3. We're going to look at, I'll tell you in a second. You need to, everybody needs to ask yourself this question all the time. How am I corresponding to things? How do, when thoughts come into mind, how do I correspond? Do I correspond with a worldview or do I correspond with God's view? Now, what I'm getting into right now, Israel just said that the gospel did not profit them because it was not mixed with faith. And the church as a whole, they get people saved and they're trying to follow the Jewish rules. Hello. The Bible said those laws, those things were a shadow of the th things that were to come. Now, how many of you would you rather walk in the real thing or would you rather walk in the shadow? <laughs> Amen. So people in the church as a whole, they're following the shadow of things. And how many of you know, the law will put you in the bondage. And when you try to follow the law, the Bible says you miss one of them. You held accountable for all of them that you miss. Isn't that something? So you don't want to do that. Amen. And the Bible said, we, we've been redeemed from the curse of the Lord. So I've been redeemed from the curse of the Lord. Amen. So like I said last week, God's not pouring his wrath out on the, he's not pouring his wrath. The wrath came into earth when Adam committed trees in the garden. God's not causing the hurricanes, all this stuff. People saying God doing, no, God's not doing that. God is a loving God. He don't do that. Well, pastor, you got, he reigned on the earth for the days, but he repented too. Y'all got that? He said he'll never, ever do it again. As a matter of fact, when you see a rainbow in the sky, what does that represent? Remind you of his covenant, of his words, that I'll never, ever do that again. As a matter of fact, when you, when you, see, when you see a rainbow, you all say, well, glory to God. Amen. See, we as Christians have to spend time in the word so when we go places, we, we go somewhere to eat or something like, hey, the word come out. I mean, Christians, you know, they, they go out to eat and, and they want to pray. Look around, see anybody looking, praying. I got to pray real quiet so they don't hear. Why you got to pray real quiet so they don't hear? 
Just pray. Father, I thank you. Bless this food right now in Jesus' name. Ain't they be cussing over there? They don't say nothing. They be have you ever go to the restaurant? They be cussing out loud. And I see not not people think, oh, that's really no. You just being who you are. And guess what? They're being who they are. And sometimes you know something. Sometimes people people need to hear somebody pray. But no, we want to be. We don't want to offend them. Let me ask this question. Did they care whether they offended you? No. So guess what I'm saying to you. Now, that'll come out of you as you spend time in the Word. Don't just try to go and just do it to be mean. Don't do it that way. It'll come out of you being who you are because you have a relationship with God. The relationship will come out of you. Amen? Now, everybody in Hebrews 3, look at verse, wow. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Before I do that, I want to say a couple of things I didn't for the benefit of the people who were in the series. There's different types of unbelief. It's ignorant of the word. That of cause unbelief. Ignorant not knowing what the words say. Number two, rejection of belief or disbelief. Disbelief is refusal to accept something that is true or you've been taught wrong teaching or religion. Number three, human unbelief. Looking at what you saw based on the physical sense or the natural. There's a natural unbelief based on your body come up. Uh, I, I don't feel like this to work. I don't feel God is present. Now, let me say this to you about feeling. You can't go by your feeling whether God is present or not. Sometimes you could feel him. Sometimes you might not feel nothing. But it doesn't mean he's not there. How many of you have a brain? Everybody, right? You ever seen it? Do sometimes you, do you feel like it's not there? No. <laughs> you know you got a brain. You know it's there. Amen? But you never saw it. You believe it. Somebody told you in a textbook that you had a brain. So guess what? You said, I have a brain. Amen? Now, oh, Hebrews 3, verse, let's go to verse 7. Hebrews 3, 7. Watch, now this is what happened with Israel. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said today, if ye will hear his voice, this is what the Holy Spirit said, if you will hear his voice, watch verse 8. Harden not your heart as in provocation the days of temptation in the wilderness. Now notice he said, harden not your heart. Now how do a person... I used to think a hard heart was a person that was rebellious against God. That's not the case. A hard heart is a person that, should I say, all their attention, should I say, is gone, Could I say, they don't have their attention on something. See, whatever you spend, spend your time or your focus on, you'll be more sensitive to. What you do not, you'll be not sensitive to. So that means if you're spending more time with the world, your heart is hardened toward the world. You're not going to want to do word. Why? Because your attention is more over here, and you'll want more of that. And I, I know this a fact. You can sit down, and, and, and let me say something to you. I love, I like Andy Griffith, but you're not careful. Let me say something to you. You can sit there and watch Andy Griffith night after night after night. And I'm not putting no bad thing on them, but I'm, I'm sharing something with you. you. You're not careful. You can get more sensitive toward that than you'll be sensitive toward the word. And there's nothing wrong with it. You understand what I'm saying? Nothing wrong with that. Nice show. Okay? But what I'm saying to you is this. Think about this a minute. If we took and spent that amount of time in the Word, wonder what would happen. Now, I'm not down on TV because I, like, I like to watch TV. I'm not down on that. What I'm saying to you, but I have to look at, I have to look at this. Every time I watch them, they're making money. See? And guess what? Somebody's getting royalties, and guess what? Their program is still working. So understand, I'll watch them, but you know, I want to be careful that I'm not working my program. Working my faith. You see what I'm saying to you? So if I spend that time working my faith, 
Instead of my saying what the word said or putting your word on the inside of me, going back, picking up a CD again and playing it over and over and over again. Let me say something to you. Man, people will start to come up and just say, man, you act like you God. And don't get offended. Just say, thank you so much. I'm acting like my heavenly father. Because, see, the word is loaded. And you don't really realize you are pregnant on the inside with God's word. Pregnant. Amen. And you know what? When a woman's pregnant, sooner or later, the baby will be born. Birth will come. And what's on the inside of you cultivated, sooner or later, guess what's going to happen? It's going to come. Amen. Amen. Verse 8, harden not your heart as in provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Watch verse 9. When your fathers tempted me and proved me and saw my works 40 years. Now they saw God's work for 40 years, but still their heart was hard. Watch this. Wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said, they knew that I always err in their heart and they have not known my ways. Here's the problem. Think about this. If a person don't know God's way, they're full of unbelief. See, you don't want me to do that, Lord? Hold your place there and go to Ephesians. What was it? 2, verse 10. And I want you to put the amplifier up. You can come back to this in a minute. Because I want to show you something that just... Just woo. See, this is this is why Satan wanna load us up with unbelief. And this is something he don't want you to know. I'm gonna deal with this more when we deal about uh, manifestation. But watch this. For we are God's own handy works. His workmanship, everybody say, I'm God's workmanship. Recreated in Christ, the anointed one and his anointed Jesus. Born anew, that we might do those good works, watch this, which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking the path which he prearranged ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Your life has already been prearranged, already ready. Now, how do I walk in the life that God has already prearranged? I walk in his word. I put time in his word and find out what he's already prearranged for me. It's already there. Where you at right now, God already knew you would be where you at right now. He already had provisions in you already to solve that problem that's right there now. It's already in you. And see, I got to see it, see like it's in me. I got to correspond like it's in me. Every seed in this place is full. All is well with me. All is well with the church. All is well. People say, how do you church do? How do you remember? All is well. What do you mean all well? How many people you got here? All full. Because it's in me. I'm not going to, you, you, we can't go down to that level. Well, you know, um, you know, we only have a few people. And I said, I ain't saying nothing. All's well. All is well. See, we can't let people, this is very careful. We can't allow people to bring us down to our spiritual world. Well, we got to tell the truth, the fact. Uh-uh. I'm a faith person. You got to talk faith all the time. Now, well, what if they're not a believer to understand? Now, now we're worrying about what other people understand. Let me tell you about it. The lady with the issue of blood, do you know what could have happened to her for going to get Jesus? She said, I just tested him with his garment. She had, she, she had a disease, and she didn't have no right to come test Jesus. But you know that lady said, I'm tired of being sick. And if I just touch the hem of his garment, I'm going to be made whole. They could have killed her for that. But she wasn't thinking about that. See, sometimes you got, we have to stop thinking about what people think. So we got to get delivered from people. 
people don't care how they act toward you. They don't care. And we, are, we, we want to walk this narrow line. I wonder what they're going to think. Be who you are. Because you know what? Be who you are in Christ. Spend the time with the Holy Spirit. He'll, he'll, the Holy Spirit will have you be bold with stuff. And you make it sitting in your head and analyze, uh-oh. And the devil, is, the devil is always trying to make us, should I say, make us feel like, okay, we got to be up to this potential with a person. Or we don't want to offend them. Or what are they going to think? What are the people going to think about this? What are they going to think about that? Somebody thinking wrong about you right now while you're sitting here. Matter of fact, I'll go further. Somebody could be talking about you right now. So, so why should you care? Get over people. Love people. But you got to get over their response. We got to respond with the word. Now watch this. But so your life has been prearranged. Already prearranged. Set to go. So I got to find out in the word what he prearranged. Now Jesus made a statement. Was it Jesus? Yeah, Jesus. He went and says he found himself he found himself in the scripture. When Jesus came to earth, Jesus did not walk the earth as the son of God. He walked the earth as the son of man. He was the son of God, yes. But he had to find himself in the scripture. In Isaiah, he found himself. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the brokenhearted, deliver the captives, so deliver them to abuse, and recover his sight to the blind. Now, that word blind he was not talking about blind people. He was talking about people that were blinded by the grace message. See, because grace, Abraham walked based on grace. Abraham didn't walk the earth based on the law. The law didn't come into after Abraham. God delivered Israel by grace, not by the law. The law didn't, it didn't come to after. But guess what? The law, the Bible said the law increases sin. The law makes you sin more. It said it strengthens sin. Amen? Now, go back to Hebrews 12, what? Nine was that now? I was at 12, nine? Three, nine, right? Three, nine, three, nine, right. Hebrews three, nine. So think about this. If something's been prearranged, why you get that? If something's been prearranged already, it's already set. And God knows all. God prearranged everything in this earth to work a certain way. The ground is designed to do what? Grow seed. Am I right or wrong? It's designed. He prearranged that. So if he prearranged it, now, if I want to have food in this earth, whether you buy it at the store, somebody got to do some farming. So they got to realize that that ground has been prearranged to grow. You and I have been prearranged by God, our life been already prearranged to grow. But what it's waiting on is waiting the same thing that the ground is waiting on, some seed. It's waiting on the word. Now, let's get back to this. When your father tempted me, proved me, and saw my words 40 years, go to verse 10 now. Praise God. Hallelujah. Verse 10. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation said, they do not always air their heart, and they have not known my ways. Verse 11, because I went there before already, but that's all right. So I swear in my wrath, they should not enter into my wrath. Now notice, he said he swear, it was swear in his wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Now, could it be there's something about entering in God's rest? I'm going to show you that eventually. Go to 12. Take heed, brethren, lest be any of you an evil heart of unbelief. Now think about it. The, the Bible says unbelief, 
a person got unbelief, he calls it an evil heart. He said, it's evil. Now, I know people think fornication and adultery and all that stuff is evil. No, unbelief is evil. Why is it evil? Because it'll short circuit your faith. That's why it's evil. He said, if you have an evil heart of unbelief, departing from the living God. Watch that part right there. Notice he said, your unbelief will cause you to depart from the living God. I'm going to say it like this. Your unbelief will cause you to depart away from the word. I'll say it again. Your unbelief will cause you to depart away from the word. That's something. Verse 13. But exhort one another daily while it is called today that any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Now would you agree if unbelief is evil, unbelief got to be sin. Go to verse 14. For we are made partakers of Christ the anointed one and his anointed, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Now, where do you get confidence from? Confidence comes from faith. Faith is your confidence. Faith is the confidence on what God has already done for you. Faith is your confidence. Matter of fact, the Amplified said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It said, but it says in, in, in uh, Amplified, now faith is the confidence, it's the assurance. It's the assurance what God has promised is already there. That's how you use your faith. Verse 14. Hallelujah. For we are partakers. I'm wrong, wrong, I went back. Never mind. Why it is said today, if you will hear his voice and harden not your heart as in provocation. Verse 16. Why it is said today, if you, go back to 15. Why it is said today, if you will hear his voice and harden not your heart as a provocation. Not going to 16 now in a minute. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. Howbeit, not all came out to Egypt by Moses. Now watch the verse 17. All of them didn't come out. Why? Because of unbelief. But with whom, but with whom was he grieved 40 years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcass fell in the wilderness? Verse 18. I'm going on this whole chapter for a reason. And whom he swear that they should not enter his rest, but to them that believe not. In other words, those that did not believe could not enter into God's rest. Unbelief will stop you from entering into God's rest. Verse 19, I think it is. So we see they could not enter in because of unbelief. They could not enter in how? Because of unbelief. Unbelief was short circuit and everything. Now, go to Hebrews 4. Let us therefore fear or reverence, that's what that means, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest. If any of you should seem to come short of it, don't become short of getting his rest. Right? Verse 2. For unto us was the gospel preached, now watch this, as well as unto them, talking about Israel, but the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So guess what? The word got to be mixed. Hey, with faith. Hello? The gospel got to be mixed with faith. Now, when he said the gospel did not profit him, he's talking about grace. Grace could not profit them if it was not mixed with faith. I'm here to tell you, grace has provided everything for you, but guess what? You cannot tap into it without faith. 
Verse 3. For we which have believed do enter into his rest. Now, we, now notice what it said. We that believe. Not those that have unbelief go enter into his rest. We that believe shall enter into his rest. As he said, I swore in my wrath if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Watch verse 4. For he spank in a certain day, place of the seventh day, on this wise God did rest on the seventh day from their work. Now notice, people, see you got to worship God on a Saturday. The Bible said, let no man judge you the Sabbath day or any other day. It doesn't matter whether you worship God on Saturday, Tuesday, any day. You should be worshiping all the time. Amen? But see, Israel had to do that because they did not have a daily resting place in God. First of all, they weren't saved. They didn't know Jesus. And when Jesus came on the scene, he did miracles on the Sabbath. They got all upset. And Jesus says, I be the Sabbaths. <laughs> so if you got Jesus, you got the Sabbaths. Amen? If a church decides they want to have church all the time on Tuesday, it really don't matter. With them. Amen. Now, but he spake at a certain place of the seventh day, and on this wide, God did rest on the seventh day from all his works. Verse 5 now. And in this place, again, if they shall, if they shall enter into my rest, verse 6, seeing therefore it, it remains that some must enter therein, and they whom it was first preached entered in, not in because of what? There it is. Now, people say they don't think what they go, go through their ear gates matter. People don't think what they hear matter. What you hear do matter. And somebody's talking to you. Now, we got to go around people in the world. We understand that. But sometimes you hear some stuff that's not right. Father, I condemn them words. They ain't coming towards me in the name of Jesus. You got to guard yourself. It's important, ladies and gentlemen. If Jesus made a statement, take heed and guard your ears, protect your ears, you got you to protect your ears. We, we got to be careful. We don't let other people form, form, form our opinion about what our life is based on what their life is. You don't want to go and try to condemn their lives because they're not in Christ. You don't condemn them. You want to love them. You want them to see your walk with Christ. You want them to want what you want. I, my wife always does it the other day. We, I think it was the last week. We got a parking space. And she said, favor God. <laughs> and that's what, see, you got, you got to learn how to acknowledge God. Favor God. I mean, the, the, the whole food's parking lot was loaded. And all of a sudden, we just pulled right in. Favor of God. My wife said, favor of God. <laughs> Amen. Now watch. But they entered in because of not an unbelief. Verse 7. Again, he limited a certain day, saying to David, today, after so long of a time, as it is said today, if you will hear his voice and harden not your heart. Notice this thing. He'd he be going back to harden your heart. I'm going to deal more about the hardened heart next week. But a hardened hard heart. You don't want your heart to get hardened toward the world, the word, rather. You want your heart to be, hard, heart to be hardened toward the world. Y'all heard I say to you? Now, when I say hardened toward the world, doesn't mean you don't, you don't live in the world, in, 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 into the, um, the world system. But you know, you got, you got God, you got so much of God's word, you, you, you still know how to act around people. You know, you, you don't got to go to work and show everybody how spiritual you are. Good morning, hi, praise the Lord, hallelujah, jumping for Jesus, you know. Good morning, how you doing? I think sometimes Christians, they do more of that stuff on the outside than they do at home. Probably don't do too much at home. You know, the time when you're alone is the time to be talking to God and speaking the word. Verse 8. And if Jesus had given them rest, then would he afterward have spoken of another day? Now watch this. This is the part that's at day 9. 
There remained, therefore, a rest to the people of God. Everybody said, I'm a people of God. And there remained a rest for me. Verse 10. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own words as God did from here. Now, when you enter into God's rest, you cease from trying to do it yourself. Trying to make something happen. We can't make nothing happen, ladies and gentlemen. Only thing we do is correspond to what he's already done. And it happened. <laughs> correspond to what he's done. It happened. Verse 11. But notice he said that we cease from our words. Just like, let me say, God, he ceased already. It's already done. You know, when the Bible said the Holy Spirit moved upon the face of the earth. And then what happened? And God said. That was his faith. But guess what? Everything Father's God concerned was already there. He just, the Bible said we understand through faith that the world was framed by what? The word. So he just framed it. He just correspond to what he was, he was there. Remember the fish. Jesus said, let down your net for a drought. Now, they probably didn't see no fish nowhere. But Father Jesus is concerned, the fish is already there. Your prosperity is already on the inside of you. But see, unbelief is going to try to come in there and tell you something different. You don't see no fish, do you? <laughs> and even Peter had to repent. Peter got himself in trouble to a degree. Well, he ain't, well, he's a little trouble, but think about it. Peter, Jesus said, let down your net for a drought. He didn't say let down your nets. He didn't say net. Peter let down one net. And that's probably the one that was no good to because he really believed. And the net, the Bible said the net break. And Peter had, Peter had to repent. Verse 12. But what happened to Peter? Unbelief came in. What happened to Peter? Based, now watch this very careful. This is what happened with Peter. This is how unbelief got in. Based on what Peter knew about fishing, Peter and them knew the waters. They knew how everything operates. Just like in your own life. You might know how situations operate, but guess what? If the words say different, he said, let down your net for a drought. Expect the drought. If he says you already prosper, you say, I am a prosperous man. If your, your bills turn around and say, not paid, all my bills are paid. I owe no man nothing but to love him. We got to talk. We got to talk. That. And what are you doing every time you're doing that? You're cultivating. You're working on it. You're working on it. You're working on it. It's in you. You're working on it. But see, when you start to say things contrary, guess what? Unbelief, and you're not careful, unbelief will get in there. Unbelief won't get in there. You can drive the unbelief, keep driving it out by the word. It'll try to get to you. But if you, if you stop listening to the word, guess what? Guess what won't be the dominating force. Sooner or later, you start talking more unbelief, talking more and more unbelief. That's what happens. Now, watch this. Now, here's the answer to your problem. Is this the one? Yeah, yeah, this is, these are your verses right here. Let me see. You have that up there. Verse 11. You jump to 10. Verse, what verse 9? I'm sorry. Verse 11. Verse 11. Watch this. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. Wow. Lest any man fall out of the same example of unbelief like Israel did. Now, would you agree? Labor means you got to do something. Patience is how, is what you do in the middle of the trial. And you're supposed to have faith, patience. Keep doing faith. That's what patience is. Faith. Faith, patience. So while you're patiently waiting, you're patiently using your faith. Now think about this a minute. He said, let us labor. So that requires something of me 
that I have to do. What is my labor? I correspond to what God has already done that's in me. So now, demons' objective is to put other thoughts in your mind to get you busy with other things. I said last week, people said, well, I don't, you understand, Pastor, I work, I don't have time. So do I. <laughs> okay? That's a lie from the enemy. If you don't have time, your time, you, you, you're running your time in confusion. Faith will control your time. Faith will manage your time properly. See, you need the Holy Spirit. We got the Holy Spirit and a lot of Holy Spirit to manage our time. Amen. So let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall at the same example of unbelief. Now, would you agree with this? If I don't labor to enter into his rest, what's going to be short circuit in my faith? I told you halfway. What's going to be short circuit in my faith? Huh? Unbelief. So if I'm not laboring, if, if I'm not laboring in the word, faith can't come, unbelief is there, and the unbelief is not being dealt with. Y'all got that. Amen. Now, I want to say something to you. Let's, let's finish this first. And he goes on to say, verse 12, for the word of God is quick. Now, he told us to labor, but now he's going to show you the word of God is quick. That means the word is alive. Now, think about this. On that page is right there. Is that word alive? Not really on the page. When you go by seed in a pack, is the seed alive? But when it goes in the ground, guess what happened? It resurrects. But he said, but the word of God is quick alive, and it's powerful. And it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Swords are worse. Piercing is even as divine as under the soul and spirit and the joint of the marrow, joint and marrow, and is discerner of the thought and the intent of the heart. Now, what he's saying there, what you got in, you got the word, it will determine your intent and based on what you would do. If you got the world, you're going to do the world. If you're watching, if you're watching Lifetime all the time, you're going to do what Lifetime do. <laughs> and I'm not saying you can't watch a movie, but don't, don't, Balance is the key to life. We got to know how to balance stuff. I mean, food is good. But, you know, you eat too much. No, what can happen? Like a, a guy I know, a minister I know, he had a birthday party, right? And um, they were talking different comments about him. And one of the guys said the doctor told him to watch his weight. And what he did, he put it all in front of him so he could see it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now, I want to do something that you can put this on the tape. Communication. It's so important that we communicate with God and, and to correspond to what he's done. God likes us to correspond. But like I told you, for unbelief, we we'll try to get it in the way. I wrote these down. Thank God for these little things sometimes. It has a lot of great use instead of just gossiping. Right? Amen. Go to Galatians 6.6. 6. Now, when I'm walking in faith, okay, I got unbelief. Unbelief wanted to get me to caught up in mammon. You know what mammon is? Mammon is when you're caught up with money. Money is... Mammon is a spirit. That's why people don't give. It's a spirit to stop them from giving. I don't see no use in giving money in the kingdom. What for? So the pastor can use it? No, God set it up. That's a spirit that's telling people not to give. And so you got to spend time with God, and God will tell you what to give and how to give. Not some minister trying to get you to manipulate to get your money. Galatians says, watch this. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches what? 
all things. That do what? Teaches all things. Now, think about this. The word communicate means to give. People don't understand there's, there's, there's a blessing in giving to the man of God. If it's good ground. People say, well, I give here, I give here. Hey, some of that place you're giving ain't gonna, don't, good ground. You're not going to reap no harvest. Watch this. And the Amplified reads, put the Amplified up there, 6-6. Six, six. So you're going to get the opportunity to correspond to what God tells you to do. Now watch this. Amplified 6-6. Six, six. Let him who receive instruction in the word. Are you getting instruction in the word? Of God, share all good things with his teacher, contributing to his support. Now I'm not doing this for you to try to support me. Just, that's not what this is about. This is about so you understand the principle of corresponding. See, now, we correspond in faith to what's in us, and guess what? This is in us, but I correspond with my finances. If you believe something, you correspond to it. Let me say that, Lord. If, show you a perfect example. If I'm believing in faith to have my bills paid, okay, and I got to, these are things that God is sure. If I have this particular bills due, and the bills, and the bills four hundred dollars, and you only have fifty, what do you do? See, huh? So to see, you know why? Because the fifty, it's not going to do nothing. You have, you have notice when Jesus came to the man, came to the people, and they didn't have much nothing to eat, and one guy had two, two fish dinners. And two fish were not going to feed all them people. So what did Jesus did? He blessed. He blessed the fish. When you don't have enough, what you do is, Father, I thank you. I have this $50 that I'm able to sow. Now, guess what? You took the unbelief right out of there. But see, you got to spend time in the Word so you will believe that. And you will know that when you do it. Somebody just telling you to do it. Don't copy what other people do. I'll show you a perfect example. Somebody said, well, I gave this amount of money and, and, uh, and, and you know, God, God told me to do this. You turn around and say, well, they did that. I'm going to do it. No, don't do that. Don't do that because God's not telling you to do that. You go see God. But I'm sharing with you most of the time. If you don't have enough, realize Look at it as a seed. Amen. Now watch this. <laughs> he said, one who is taught the word of God to share all good things with his teacher contributed to spiritual material support. There's a, there's a, there's a scripture that said the man that ministers the gospel live off the gospel. But watch this. Verse, um, the next verse. Verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he reap. He don't sow nothing, he's going to reap nothing. Now there's a scripture in the Bible that says, give. Put up there, Luke 6, 38, and I'm going to close. Hallelujah. Y'all Okay. It says, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Now, shall men give unto your bosom? But with, with the same measure you meet with all, it shall be measured. How you measure it is how you measure it will determine your income back, how you measure it. Now, watch this. I'm going to think about this a minute. Give not, and it shall not be given unto you. Give not. And it shall not be given unto you. So simple. Give and it shall be given to you. Give not, it shall not be given unto you. Very simple. Whatever man soweth, that shall he also reap. That's up to you. And notice how you measure it. How you measure it will determine how it's measured back to you. How much seed a farmer put in the ground to grow a crop for his, for his harvest will determine how much seed he put in the ground if he wants so much. Matter of fact, there's a guy, they gave talents. One guy took and buried his. And you know what Jesus did? The guy didn't do nothing with his. He took his and gave it to the one that was doing something. 
Amen? Well, every head bowed, every eye closed. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you. We thank you, Father's words are germinating in the hearts of each and every one. We give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name.